Moska means a flat and auspicious place in Tibetan and is a village at an altitude of 3,900 meters where 96 families live, protecting this pure and sacred land with diligence and kindness. After graduating from university, Girung returned to his hometown. To him, the colorful and prosperous world outside is never as beautiful as Mosca, embraced by its snowy mountains. After graduating with a major in environmental ecology, Girung has become even more convinced of the importance of the harmony between nature and the rest of the world. Back in his hometown, he looks forward to using more scientific methods to protect the natural ecology that the people of Mosca have always cherished. Warm and tranquil traditional villages or bustling modern cities can both be places of happiness that people rely on to survive and the green homesteads that they long for. The academician Fu Bojie has fashioned a green miracle in a bustling city. What he has been searching for is China's unique ecological wisdom. Heaven and earth must be in their rightful places before all creatures can flourish. Today, human beings use unprecedented scientific and technological power to grasp the delicate balance between resource exploitation and environmental protection, to maintain an ecological understanding between human beings and nature, to find the optimum state for the earth we live on. September is harvest season for hairy crabs. This delicious crab, grown in Lake Tai, enriches Chinese people's experience of green ecology while dishing up a delicious feast. Shua Jingen has been raising crabs for over 30 years, and this year he caught wild hairy crabs for the first time. The traditional feeding of crabs is a double-edged sword. While it promotes increased crab output and income, it also inevitably leads to excess nutrients in the water, which is potentially catastrophic for the water quality of Lake Tai. Cyanobacteria, the most primitive and widespread algae on Earth, played an irreplaceable role in transforming the Earth's surface from an anaerobic environment to an aerobic one. When there is an excess of nutrients in the water, it causes cyanobacteria to multiply wildly and deplete the oxygen in the water, leading to increasingly serious water pollution. Wu Ling Kun has been working on Lake Tai for nearly 30 years working more than six hours a day to keep a constant eye on water conditions in the lake. Water, 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 water
蓝藻的生长、繁殖，因此爆发。二水里边不可能存在有大闸蟹。Monitoring and dredging are important means of controlling cyanobacteria density. The best results in cyanobacteria control require a lot of manpower and material resources, but it is almost impossible to avoid blind spots on a lake of nearly two and a half thousand square kilometers without the help of technology. The unmanned observation stations that have been established are extending the range of Wu Lingkun's surveillance. Based on real-time data, dredgers working on the surface can identify and react to critical areas of cyanobacteria in a timely and accurate fashion. Today, Lake Tai has built 13 unmanned Wi-Fi-enabled observation systems covering one-third of the area of North Lake Tai. In addition to crab feeding, the random discharge of industrial wastewater is another important cause of cyanobacteria outbreak. How to respect the laws of nature and protect and restore ecology while developing a high-quality economy is a conundrum of the age. Dr. Wu Jing, who grew up near the water, has a natural love for the watery landscape. The use of more precise means to trace the source of pollution is a problem that Wu Jing a researcher at the School of Environment of Tsinghua University is currently solving. Lake Tai is one of the most affluent regions in China. The latest data for 2020 shows that four of China's ten leading cities in terms of GDP are located around the Lake Tai Basin. Lake Tai, which nourishes the beautiful land south of the Yangtze River, once faced tremendous environmental pressure during its rapid economic development. Faced with large discharge volumes of industrial wastewater from a complex array of pollution sources, Wu Jing knew that the only way to trace each polluter was by identifying the signature components of the wastewater found at different sources. During the water sampling process, Wu and her team discovered that every source of pollution has its unique characteristics which distinguish it from other sources, much like a person's fingerprints. This important revelation gave birth to water quality fingerprint tracing technology. In 2017, the world's first water pollution tracing device was created. It takes only 13 minutes to analyze the composition of a pollutant and pinpoint the location of the source. Water quality fingerprinting technology provides a scientific basis for precise management of water bodies, from which China has gradually built up a highly practical database of water quality fingerprints with a complete system of classification. By comparing the water fingerprints that need to be detected with the database, the source of pollution can be identified in the shortest time. And the source of pollution can be targeted. A positive cycle in ecology not only requires innovative methods of science and technology, but also the promotion of ecological concepts within society. Protecting this land and water passes on prosperity and hope to the next generation. 
我们要把长江的水资源保护和环境生态的保护修复作为国家的战略去推进。我们希望所有的河流、所有的湖泊都是健康的，都是幸福的，都是能造福人民的。The rivers and the sea come together as one. The ocean was the starting point of life on Earth. It is vital to the future of the human world and is rich in resources. Now, with the growth of fish farming, the ocean has become a blue granary. Winter is the season with the plumpest sea cucumbers, and there are always people who work hard in the cold winter for their delicious flavours. At this time, the temperature of seawater is around four to six degrees Celsius, and the divers go into the water at least six to eight times a day. Each person can collect nearly a hundred kilograms of sea cucumbers, and although it's hard work, they all enjoy this precious gift from the sea. In 2011, Zhang Chengde, who had never seen the ocean before, came to Qinghai County, Liaoning Province. This is the first time he has stood by the sea, and he was a little overwhelmed. When he came, he was very excited about the sea. 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 So, when the people of the sea came to the sea, he said, you have to build a sea. That's how you can get a sea. This was all about seeing the ocean as a farm. Just as Jiang Chanda was ready to make his big move, the sea delivered an unexpected blow. 2013年, 这次事件也给我们敲响了警钟，就是海洋牧场的生态健康状况是我们必须关注的一个问题。It is this crisis that has made people realize that the gifts of the ocean are also conditional. You can't just exploit it without protecting it. You can't just gain without looking after it. Even the generous ocean can't give forever, and the key lies with people and their attitudes. The concept of marine farms is to establish a natural, rich, marine ecological balance in conservation and development, starting with reef dropping. By changing his understanding of the sea and ocean farms, Zhang Chengde established a relationship with the sea, based on respect and reverence. As marine farm ecological construction continually advanced, in 2019, the intelligent cage farming platform Long Whale One was created. While collecting environmental data in real time, it precisely dispenses feed and automatically cleans cages, making the management of the marine farm observable, measurable and controllable. With the establishment of this intelligent ocean platform, the entire coastal marine environment has gradually improved. And Zheng Chanda also ushered in the annual Blue Harvest Festival. Come on, come on. 
啊，上来了！哎呀，没少干呢，还真上来了啊！哎，这谁干这么多呀？干了，哎妈，一百一十七斤，从哪干更多？一百一十八斤。这原先的海底啊，荒荒凉凉，就跟那个丘陵的沙漠一样，没有东西，也没有植物和生物。从你改造完海洋牧场之后嘛，把它打造成了就是海底，你像鱼了也有家，海参也有家了。Technology has built a common home for people and the sea. The ocean farm not only brings stability and harvest, it is also an ecological regulating device that improves the relationship between people and the sea. I'm not going to go to the sea. I think it's already becoming a local fisherman. Every day I'm out of the sea, I'm out of the sea, I'm out of the sea, I'm out of the sea. 觉得哪儿都挺幸福的。In this new era, the ocean has become a rich farm and a heaven for those who cultivate it. Only when mankind regains respect for nature can we continue to enjoy enlightenment and nourishment from the sea. 2013年1月份的时候,中国东部地区实际上是有超过了100万平方公里的污染过程,也是因为那次污染,我们国家发布了我们叫大气污染防治行动计划。Chang Li, a native of Lanzhou, is a veteran runner who has participated in more than 40 marathons and has fresh memories of the smog. Marathon this competition, this this fluid is directly touching the air. If the air quality is bad, it will affect the air quality. This Lanzhou is before the air quality was bad. 鼻子，这样跑的，这一醒啊，都是黑渣渣的。兰州是生态环境特别脆弱，它是两山加一河这样的地形，它也是我们原来一个比较著名的一个工业城市。In 2013, the persistent smog made Lanzhou, once a city on the Silk Road, a city invisible to satellites. In 2015, an air quality control campaign with the participation of every citizen in Lanzhou began. Lanzhou is the one that 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 is the one as 1,286 boilers in Lanzhou city were converted to natural gas, and 107 large and medium-sized enterprises moved out of the city. Ranging from enterprise emissions to small household coal stoves, every source of pollution was effectively managed. Continue, continue, fire! Now, this is the Lanzhou Park, it's very comfortable. 最受跑者欢迎的比赛来说的话，兰州马拉松应该是排到第四吗？还是第三名？现在 
These sacrificial and drastic acts have cleared the clouds so you can see the sun, turning black lunjo into blue lunjo. Such solutions for air pollution control to make the sky bluer have since become a common goal of China's urban and rural governance. So Yi, who lives in Beijing, likes to record the daily changes of the city with his cell phone. Since 2013, when the word smog first did the rounds, he photographed the Beijing sky every morning. One after another, these pictures were shocking. Ecological prosperity is a form of prosperity for civilization. In the face of severe urban smog, Beijing launched a series of initiatives from controls over coal use to motor vehicle controls. Chimneys, once symbols of urban strength, have now become one of the biggest problems facing pollution control. Shougang, founded in 1919, is one of the oldest steel companies in China. Since the founding of the People's Republic of China, Shougang's rapid rise to prominence once made it a pillar of Beijing's economy, and it made a historic contribution to the construction of new China. In 2005, the company decided to relocate its entire 8 million tons of infrastructure. The relocation of Shougang was not only an internal requirement for the sustainable development of the enterprise, but also due to an external demand for environmental control. In 2014, Shougang settled in Saofei Dian and Qianan in Hebei province. However, the move was only the first step and new challenges arose. A piece of steel requires 68 steps from its raw material to casting. It's a difficult operation to ensure that emissions from each process meet environmental standards and achieve ultra-low emissions for the overall process. In the steel production process, a lot of soot is created, which gets everywhere. How to control and eliminate these irregular emissions is key to reducing emissions at all steel mills. We to achieve effective control, Shougang's Qian'an site increased environmental protection costs by 40% and added an integrated system for the management and control of irregular emissions. When pollutants increase during certain processes, the system will automatically adjust the dust collector's valve and the air volume to reduce pollution particles generated at the corresponding points. By controlling the level of ultra-fine emissions in the entire process, the fine particle index inside the relocated steel plant is 10% lower than the air outside the plant. 
Shogang's relocation is not only a requirement for its own sustainable development, but also a requirement to protect the environment in accordance with the Initiative for Coordinated Development in the Beijing Tianjin Hebei region. So Yi, who kept recording, took more than two million photos in six years, stitched together like an urban ecological scroll, recording the moment when blue skies returned to Beijing. This is called Chinese Tomb. It's the highest of Beijing. It's 530 meters. When I filmed, this tower didn't have. Then I just filmed it every day. Sometimes I filmed it and I couldn't see it. It was very bad at this time. That's why now, especially this year, you can almost see it every day. This is the Chinese Tomb. According to the latest data from the Ministry of Ecological and Environmental Protection, in the first eight months of 2020, in 337 cities nationwide, the number of fine particles in the air decreased by 11.4% compared to the previous year. Behind these figures lies the continued progress of environmental technology in China and a general increase in environmental awareness, which is the surest way to success. When sandstorms wreak havoc in cities and villages thousands of miles away, people turn their eyes to the vast Gobi Desert. The desert is a no man's land. On this planet, one third of land is desert. This is the most difficult road. The home of herdsman Monk Dalai is located in the northwest of the Kubu Chi Desert. Twenty years ago, Monk Dalai, who was working in Shanghai, had to return to his hometown to take care of his elderly father. The grasslands swallowed up by the desert are the homeland that Monk Dalai can never return to. The reality that the desert was moving in and people were moving out was heartbreaking, but unstoppable. Until one day, Monk Dalai decided to defend his homeland by planting trees. For 20 years, Monk Dalai's family has been a lone and solitary fighting force in this desert. What they lacked most in their tree planting battle against the desert was time. Monk Dalai often prays for time to stop. But in China's Fujian province, far away from the desert, one man helped him put things on pause. Lin Jianqi is a crop research expert at Fujian Agriculture and Forestry University. In a field research project 27 years ago, Lin Jianqi saw for himself how land erosion caused the river in Ningxia to elevate above the ground in the desert. Working out how to rely on biotechnology to change the ecological environment of the Yellow River Basin has become his tireless pursuit. In the past 27 years, Lin Jianqi has experienced repeated failures and overcome technical problems, finally breeding a kind of weed that can survive in the desert environment and quickly bind the yellow sand, elephant grass. 
or Penicetum purpureum. However, when Lin Jianqi transplanted elephant grass to the desert, it did not survive the first winter. Together with Lin Jianxi, another person also witnessed this cruel reality, a ranger on the banks of the Yellow River, Yang Geming. Yang Geming's home is located at the entrance of the He Tao Plain in Denko. This was an important crossing point for east-west traffic on the Yellow River. Yang Geming's family is the only family left here. His father once volunteered to come to Dongko to guard trees on both sides of the Yellow River for 37 years. Now, facing a swathe of old and dead woods and the encroaching desert, Yang Geming doesn't know how much longer he can continue. The unforeseeable future faced by those persevering in the desert made Lin Jianxi consider ways to solve the dilemma. The large temperature difference between day and night in the upper reaches of the Yellow River was the root cause of the failure of the first generation of elephant grass. So to make a plant able to withstand temperatures as low as minus 20 degrees, Lin Jianxi needed to improve the breeding technology. In 2018, Lin Jianxi cultivated a new generation of elephant grass, Oasis 3. Dune movement is driven by the wind, which transports sand grains mostly within a height of 10 centimeters from the ground. As a result, elephant grass, which takes less than a hundred days to grow, is more effective at binding sand than trees, which take two to five years. Oasis 3 has taken root in Ulaanbaatar Desert on both sides of the Yellow River. Not only acting like a green chain to stop the movement of sand dunes, but also giving Yan Geming's family which has been fighting against sand for 37 years, some extra income. Yang Geming's extra income is just one small example of the success that was to come. On a larger scale, by 2019, more than 100,000 acres of elephant grass planted in China had become a significant mainstay of ecological protection along the Yellow River. Monk Dalai's hometown is also quietly changing. According to the latest data, one-third of the 18,600 square kilometers of the Kubuchi Desert has been turned into oasis. In 2019, the United Nations report card on desert management shows that one-quarter of the world's new green areas are in China. The perseverance of several generations has enabled the miraculous victory of the Chinese people against the desert. 
with the help of greenery. Located in the southern foothills of the Tian Shan Mountains, Kula is an important transportation hub and distribution center, connecting the north and south of Xinjiang. However, due to the secondary salinization of the land, it is also the largest saline and alkaline area in China. There are about 250 million acres of arable saline land in the world, and 33 million acres are in China. In this vast country, the proportion of land suitable for farming is inconsistent. One effective way to repair saline lands is to reduce excess salt in the soil that affects crop growth. This is Zhu Chunshan's fifth visit to Xinjiang this month. As a doctor of soil science, he has been commuting frequently between Beijing and Xinjiang for more than a decade, a commuting distance of 3,000 kilometers, just to focus on the management of saline lands. The salinization of the land leads to reduced crop yields and eventually results in barren land, a reality that Zhu Jianshan does not want to see. Xiang Yugoa, 56, has been living in Yihua town, Dongying, in Shandong province. For a long time, the town of Yihua, located at the mouth of the Yellow River Delta, has suffered from seawater encroachment and the increasing salinization of the land. The saline land has failed every year and local villagers are forced to go elsewhere to work. Shang Yugoa, who had been reluctant to leave his hometown, met Zhu Jianshan, who was determined to transform the saline soil. But Xiang Yugoa initially had doubts about the salt drainage system's technology. In the face of the villagers' hesitation, Zhu Jianshan didn't back down, as he was highly confident in the technology. His task was to make the best of it, so that the villagers could see the effect of the technology. In July 2020, the Beidou 3, a high precision global satellite navigation system made up of 30 satellites, was completed, providing users around the world with a free positioning service that is accurate within 10 meters, a figure that will have a profound impact on all walks of life in China, especially agriculture, which requires intensive farming. With the efforts of Zhu Chunshan's team and big subsidies from the government, the underground pipe alkali conversion project was finally implemented in Kula, in Xinjiang and Donyin, in Shandong province. After only a year, results had the whole town of Yihe excited.
，经过这个十年官工程的彻彻彻彻底改变这个土地面貌，现在土地不是一般的了就好了。原先这亩田在七八百斤左右，现在到达一千三百斤左右，一千四五百块钱的收入。Using saline soil improvement results in Yihe Township as a reference, if China's 33 million or so acres of saline arable land was scientifically improved, the average yield of grain per acre would increase by 300 kilograms, which could provide food for 40 million people per year. Chinese people have a deep and long-standing affection for the land, and they are grateful for its gifts and enjoy its bounty. Part of the modernization of agriculture is to repair and effectively reverse soil degradation with the power of science and technology. Preserving the land on which human beings depend on to survive will, in return, bring prosperity. As the lungs of the earth, forests are an integral part of the earth's ecology. They form the most valuable natural resource of a country and a region. The protection of forests and the environment has emerged as a common consensus for all mankind. Zhang Yingshan is an ordinary worker in the Yichun forestry plantation. He is a striking example of how the whole of society is changing in terms of environmental protection. 我父亲一村的那那个林业是第一代的伐木工人，我是七五年参加工作，还是以伐木为主。红松、云杉，嗯、呃，落叶松、仙漆，这这凡是那这些树种都都都采，那就红松都是上千年、五百多年的。Yi Chun, for more than half a century, has contributed nearly a fifth of timber from state-owned forestry areas to the construction of New China. This was the impression people had of the capital of the forests in the old days. Excessive logging finally put Yi Chun in a difficult situation in the 1980s. There was a resource crisis, an economic crisis, and a painful transition slowly began. Amid the pain and confusion, Zhang Yishan made the biggest change in his life, from cutting down trees to planting them. Over almost 30 years, Zhang Yishan has planted more than 1 million trees on 750 acres of land, witnessing an era of change. Today, Yichun is the most important ecological safety barrier in northern China. The new forested area is more than 1.46 million acres in size, with an average annual net expansion rate of more than 10 million cubic meters of forest, making it a natural oxygen haven. Green water and green mountains are mountains of silver and mountains of gold. From felling trees to planting trees, from development to protection, the fundamental transformation of ecological thinking has been perfectly presented in one generation, building a beautiful China that has become the finest vision of all Chinese people. Since 2017, China introduced a national park system, and in less than three years, 90% of terrestrial ecosystem types and 85% of key wild animal populations have been effectively protected. The number of bird species has also increased, 
from 189 to 223, just in Qinghai Lake area alone. The power of human civilization once controlled the balance of nature. Now what people need to do is to regain their awe of nature and to respect the common homeland of all life. This is the Chinese poetic expression of the coexistence of biological diversity. All things grow together without harming each other, and all rules exist without conflicting each other. Only when we understand the meaning of ecology can we build a true ecological civilization. Nature, ecology, people and everything share the same destiny and the passage of time will witness them all. Here is a flourishing country, full of life. Yeah.